You know, our industry is in the news a lot today. Um, the conversation has shifted a bit. It used to be that the news was all about the next opportunity, the great innovation cure, the um, great science that is moving us forward. And right now the conversation has shifted. And it's shifted to some other things that are a little bit scary. As we look at um, you know, programs at the federal level for taxes, the medical device tax, um, if it's not suspended or repealed, we'll be back in January and we'll stifle innovation. We're trying to figure out how to pay for health care right now. Because the reality is that my generation, the baby boom generation, is coming into our peak spending years. And because we now have so many wonderful things that we can do, we're all living longer. And the numbers are going to make it really hard for us to figure out not only how to help these people, but how to pay for it. And so that's not something that we're going to solve tonight. But it is something that we have to solve. And there are answers that we have to find. You heard about a pioneer this evening who was in a state that needed to find answers for education and she built a coalition of people to figure it out and they did here in arizona nationally globally we will have to figure those things out but there are things that we also have to keep in mind so some of you know that um, i lost my dad this year in april and it was hard. I had never gone through the end of life process with anybody that close before or had to sit by a bedside and explain to the most important man for most of my life that I'm sorry, Daddy, I can't get you a total artificial heart because you have end stage renal failure. And Daddy, I, I can't get you a kidney because you have heart disease, you don't qualify at your age. That was hard. But then my dad said something to me, and this is what I want to share with you, because if there's anything that helps us do what we do, it's this. My dad was 82 years old, and I was sitting by his bedside and we were having the conversation about what we needed to do next, which at the time was turning off his defibrillator. My dad was the Medtronic people. My dad was a walking commercial for Medtronic. If you made it, he had it. But he said, I understand that this is the time. But what you have to understand is that I should have died when I was 52 years old. I should have died. My father had vascular disease that moved into coronary disease. Um, and he started getting interventions from our industry, including a quadruple bypass at the age of 52. But over the 30 good years that he had because of the things that the people in this room do, the medical devices, the drugs, the excellent clinical care that is available. He saw his, all of his children grow up and graduate from college. He saw them all get married. He saw his grandchildren get married. And he met his great-grandchildren. He had 30 years because of what the people in this room and people like you around the country and around the world do. And as we continue to have this pricing discussion, the tax discussion, the balancing the budget discussion, which, okay, remember, I'm an economist. Those things are all important. 
but we should never lose sight of those years that we give to the people around us. And you notice I say people and not patients because Lewis Breton I know is in the audience somewhere. And when Lewis won his Fast Lane Award and then we were preparing later for their Company of the Year Award, he reminded me that not everyone has the luxury of being a patient. Not everyone has the luxury of the care that we have. But there are people in Arizona, around the United States, and around the world that need us and what you do. So when we get dressed up and we celebrate and we acknowledge the wonderful people in our community, what's really, really important is that we keep in mind that no matter how hard it is or how frustrating it is, that we have to set our sights high, that we have to figure out how to get to yes even when you get a thousand rejections. We have to build the relationships with investors not just in Arizona but around the world because people are waiting for us to find answers for them today. We live in an age of miracles. When you go into the other room, go visit Cure SMA. There's a disease, spinal muscular atrophy. I hope I said that right. And that disease, if a child is born with that, in a, in a severe case, it's unlikely they will see their second birthday. But several years ago, we came out with a disease to treat that, to slow the progression of that, that disease. And this year, the FDA approved the first gene therapy for a, for a neurological disease. And babies that are born with SMA can be treated with this gene therapy, and they are cured. It's not an extra 30 years. For these children, it's a whole lifetime. That is the age that we are now living in. That is the challenge that we all have. That is our opportunity to be pioneers and leave a lasting legacy.